So today I'm continuing work on my 1995 Nissan 300ZX. In the last episode, I finished off the last bit of wiring for my manual swap and started work on a major engine tune-up. I pulled the top part of the intake manifold off and pulled the valve covers off to fix an oil leak I discovered when I had the transmission out. In this episode, I want to get the engine back together, maybe do some tuning in the ECU, and hopefully take this thing on a test drive. But first thing I need to do is finish cleaning these cylinder heads and get these valve covers back on and sealed up. All right, let's get to it. All right, I've got all of the uh, meeting surfaces all cleaned up and all pretty much uh, like new. And um, I got two of the valve covers back on. Um, the two easy ones, it's kind of hard to get them on around these, uh, these EGR tubes. I'm sure it's a lot easier and you're probably supposed to remove the EGR tubes, but you can do it without removing them if you kind of just bend them to the side a little bit. Um, and they're pretty strong, so I'm sure they're gonna be okay. So I just need to do these two now. I gotta goop up this little plug and put it down right there and then I did realize that these guys should be taken out so I went ahead and took those out as well and I put uh, RTV underneath so I could seal that guy up. Awesome, let me do this really quick. Even on the rubber gasket I definitely put a little bit of that goop in the corners. I've done enough of these uh, 90s Japanese cars to know that's the key to keeping these things sealed is to put RTV in all of the little uh, corners. So yeah, let's get this finished up. Whew. All right, that was, uh, that was something. Um, I got all four, got all four of these guys back on there now. Torched down, all snug, and uh, and gooped up with RTV. Probably more than I needed, but um, I always kind of play it safe. Should all be fairly easy from here. Um, just a lot of hoses to plug back in. Probably go grab some new hoses tomorrow, and uh, hopefully we can get this thing all buttoned up. All right, it's the next day, and uh, time to get this thing all put back together. So I uh, I did get a handful of replacement hoses. And when I ordered these uh, silicone hoses here, um, not all of it was available. Um, some was out of stock, but I'm hoping that I could piece together the rest of the hoses with um, with just various pieces that I have. And I have my uh, my box of uh, scrap hoses here because I'm a pack rat. So so I always keep every like uh, excess hose that I have from whatever past projects. And uh, it looks like I have a lot of stuff that's going to work. So uh, fuel lines, vacuum lines, um, PCV hoses, all of that stuff's going to get swapped out. I also have to cap off, there's some stuff back here, um, you know, this guy, this guy, a few of these hoses back here, which have to do with that under intake water system or, or coolant system, I guess, um, and actually remove some of that hose too, just to, just to remove uh, possible future leaks um, from probably the most terrible spot to have a leak from directly in the back of the engine. So I think I'm gonna make a run real quick to the auto parts store. I'll just grab a bunch of hoses of uh, various lengths and we'll replace everything we can. All right, got those hoses all situated. So I got this hose running to complete this loop right here. That hose completes that loop, and that should be the cooling system sealed up. So I think we're all set there. So I guess it's about time to put the intake manifold back on. There's going to be a lot of uh, wire routing and, and a lot, a lot of uh, vacuum hoses and a couple of fuel hoses in there as well. So um, I'll have to do this very carefully and, and make sure that I do it in the right order. First, I need to uh, reinstall this guy, my idle air control valve, freshly fixed up and get all that set up on there and uh, we'll be ready to throw it on.
So I was about to put this balance tube back on, but uh, you know, it's, it's super dusty and I don't know if I'd be able to polish that thing up in a reasonable amount of time. So, so I was thinking I would actually just hit it with black paint real quick. I think that would actually look pretty good, a lot better than this like old dusty pipe, which was very, very prominent in the engine bay. All right, I think I'm getting there. I've got all of the uh, the bolts started. I did uh, I did hit this with black paint, and I'm glad I did because it looks pretty cool. I'm gonna look pretty good back there. So I think now it's time to torque this thing down. I know there was a lot of stuff underneath this thing to kind of get plugged in before I torqued it, but I think I've got everything. Um, PCV tubes on both sides. I've got the EGR tubes lined up. I think all of the wiring is ran. I hope that's everything. Um, I really don't want to squish this gasket and then end up having to take this thing back off. I feel pretty confident. Well, I broke an EGR tube. This rubber is just like, I mean, it's not rubber anymore. Totally crunchy now, turned into plastic. But uh, check out what I found. It's like a pipe cleaner. It's so weird. I have no idea why that was in there. All right, I think we're getting close here. I gotta say, man, this, this thing really is kicking my butt. I, uh, I really underestimated like how many just tubes and wires and all the stuff that's connected to this thing. And I'm spending hours getting to like these little random clips that are like holding a hose on the back of the intake manifold. I know that these engines kind of have a reputation for tight spaces, but um, in my case, it's really just like old cracked dry rubber hoses in this thing, which I suppose is part of the experience as these 90s cars age. Vacuum hoses were really popular back then, so I guess I'm sort of paying the price for that, but um, it's good to know that all these hoses are gonna be replaced or, or most of them. All right, I'll keep going on these things and uh, hopefully soon we'll be done, ready to fire this thing up. Okay, I, uh, I think we got everything plugged in. Um, I'm sure there's something that I missed. I always have that feeling before I start up uh, uh, my car after doing a big overhaul like this. It's kind of the same feeling when you go on vacation and you think you left the, uh, I don't know, whatever, the toaster oven on or something like that. But I checked and double checked everything. All the vacuum lines are hooked up. I believe all of the power wires are hooked up too. Um, I think everything's good to go. It seems okay. Um, it's idling a little bit high, so I might need to adjust something. Uh, I'm not sure what. Maybe the uh, throttle position sensor needs to be adjusted. I know um, that was something that I wanted to look into. Um, but the car runs, and it seems to be firing on all cylinders, so um, I'll call that a win. And I think I'm going to turn this thing off before it gets too warm. But uh, that's awesome. I'm, I'm glad it's running anyway and seems to be pretty happy. 
All right, so it's the next day. And last night, as you saw the engine, um, it did fire up and it did run okay. It seemed like it was missing just a little bit. And, uh, you know, I was going to actually adjust this throttle position sensor. Um, I even like moved it a little bit. I tried to put it back in the same place, but I think this needs a pretty precise adjustment. I attempted to do a, uh, a test of the resistance of the sensor and it just wasn't getting the, uh, the range that I thought it should. So I'm gonna try what seems like a little bit more common voltage test on this guy. All right, so the voltage on this uh, white wire here should be between, they say, 4 and 5, or uh, 0.4 and 0.5 volts, and I'm at 0.47, so that should be perfectly within range. I think that's close enough. Now that I'm pretty sure this thing is adjusted okay, um, I kind of want to see how it runs as is. Let's get this thing fired up. Um, we'll check for vacuum leaks. We'll make sure everything's okay. It's definitely possible that some of these old hoses like this guy kind of were disturbed when I pulled this thing off, you know, and maybe there's there's holes in there and it's causing some vacuum leakage. So I'll grab my brake cleaner and we'll find out here soon enough. Awesome. Um, it did seem to fire up just a little bit better this time. And it seems to be running pretty good actually. Uh, it's idling a little bit high, but I'm pretty sure that's just the uh, idle air control valve doing its thing. I'm, uh, I'm smelling some uh, coolant, so hopefully that's not a leak back there in my, my new pipes, but it's just the uh, coolant burning off. Let's see what it's uh, idling at. Looks like it's just over a thousand or right at a thousand, so I think for the temperature, which is still low, that's just about right. And uh, yeah, I've got a lot more confidence in this now. Um, speaking of temperature, I really should put coolant in here. So I think I'm gonna go grab my uh, my funnel thing and we'll, uh, we'll make sure to get this thing bled out and I think it's ready for a test drive. These funnel things work pretty good. Um, these things are pretty cool. It basically raises the level of the water up high and kind of puts pressure, I guess, or, you know, gravity on the system. So it, I think the idea is that it uh, makes the bubbles of the, of the system kind of work their way up um, towards the highest point of water. You know, on a car like this, you can see just how much lower the radiator is, the high point of the radiator. Oh, you know what, actually, let's go ahead and bleed it from here as well. There we go. Yeah, a good bit of smoke coming from over here. Um, I'm not gonna worry yet because I, I know that I did spill um, a good bit of coolant right over in this area, but um, it should burn off here in a few minutes and, uh, and we'll know soon enough if we have a leak or not. Nothing dripping down here. It's a very good sign. No oil, no coolant. That's actually a big relief. All right, well, I got this thing outside idling and uh, trying to get all the air bubbles. Um, you can kind of see them actually, kind of see them working their way out of the system. So that's, that's very good to see. And uh, a little bit of good news, the uh, actually very, <laughs> very good news. Um, the smoke does seem to have stopped. So I think it just needed time to burn off. I'm pretty sure it was like a bunch of fluid just kind of pulled up somewhere back there. So I think we're okay there. I did try and hit some of my vacuum hoses where there might be a vacuum leak and uh, you know I thought maybe I heard a little bit of idle change right here let's give it a try I don't know it might just be my imagination but otherwise I couldn't find any noticeable vacuum leaks so I think we're all good there I'm gonna let this thing get up to operating temperature and make sure the thermostat opens so we can get the rest of the air out all right so the coolant system is all bled and I want to see if I can dial this thing in a bit better I feel like I've done everything I can with my tune-up. It's not throwing any codes. I don't think there's anything major wrong, like a misfire or anything like that. To me, it feels like maybe the ignition timing might be off a bit. You know, I did try and check the timing with the old uh, timing light here. You're supposed to hook it on either this loop right here or this number one spark plug coil. Um, I did get a signal from both, but as I read is very common online, I didn't really get a good timing mark reading from this crankshaft. So instead, I'm gonna try kind of a, kind of an interesting method of uh, checking the timing. 
And actually it's gonna allow me to check a few other things as well. I bought this, <laughs> this cable here, which plugs into some sort of like port. I guess they call it the, the console port or something. Now this car is OBD1, but it kind of has like almost an OBD2-esque <laughs> sort of a USB connection here, uh, which is pretty cool. It is the very last year of OBD1, so I guess by this time they probably had figured out some way to connect to some old computer. And luckily after some finagling with the software, I was actually able to get this thing to plug into my uh, to my Windows, well, my, my boot camped Windows uh, Apple computer here. And uh, if I fire this thing up. And I hit connect here. I do actually get some sort of a connection here from the uh, ECU, um, which is pretty cool. I, you know, there's all kinds of stuff I can check on here. I haven't really messed with this software too much, but you know, it'll give you all of the gauges you might want, water temp, throttle position. Um, and so far, all of the ones I've tested seem to work. The RPM. There we go. And uh, when I rev the engine, I actually do get an accurate reading on the uh, computer. We'll set ignition timing, save. Now, this is already reading um, what I think is low. I, I think it's supposed to be closer to like 15 and it says it's at five or six. So I wanna take this thing for a spin and I wanna see what happens when the car's bogging down. If this ignition timing just goes down too far or I suppose up too far, then maybe that's a good indicator that there's something wrong here. All right, so I'm here at a big empty parking lot with a uh, back road here. So perfect place to give this thing a few test runs. So we're idling right now, and uh, we're at maybe between 10 and 15 ignition timing, but when I put it in gear, it does go up closer to 15, it seems like, thanks to that neutral safety switch. So let's take off here, give it a slow rev, and we'll see what happens. You know, to me, it does seem like the ignition timing is kind of going a little bit flat. I know it's supposed to advance quite a bit um, when you accelerate, so I wonder if there's something going on with the uh, timing setting. Um, I'm not sure if that's something you need to adjust in the ECU or in the engine, but I'll give the engine adjustment a try. All right, so this is the crank angle sensor here, and from what I understand can be used to dial in the engine timing, among other things. I know that uh, you loosen these bolts and uh, turn this guy to adjust the timing on the engine. Um, I don't know if this is exactly the correct method, but, but for now I just want to test moving this and see if anything gets better or worse. That might give me an indicator whether it's uh, timing related or not. Well, good news. I think that might have been the problem. It does seem like all of the hesitation is gone. I'm super happy. I've been chasing this problem down for a while now. I don't hear any detonation or, or knock or anything like that, so I think I'm just gonna leave it as is for now. Uh, I'm so happy this thing's running right. I think that's a good place to finish this episode. Next episode, I'm taking this thing back to the drag strip, race the Challenger, and we'll see if this thing gives it a better run.